Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Genesis pushes IFR capabilities for single-engine helicopters. Aspen updates Pro Max software and adds more autopilot support. True Blue Power unveils new lithium main shift batteries. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to our special coverage of the 2023 AEA Convention and Trade Show. ANN Livestream dozens of exciting new avionics announcements, and we'll be covering those today and over the week, so you can be sure to get all the most important avionics news from AEA 2023, live streaming in partnership with AEA for some 15 years now. Now let's get into today's stories. Genesis pushes IFR capabilities for single-engine helicopters. Genesis Aerosystems is working jointly with Airbus Helicopters for the development of IFR capabilities for the single-engine H-125. The Genesis Helicopter Suite will be certified to allow H-125 operators to expand the helicopter's mission capabilities in all weather conditions. Introducing the Airbus H-125 Single Engine IFR Operations STC project. This exciting project is scheduled for completion by the second half of 2024 and will provide new operational capabilities to single-engine helicopters. The solution includes the Genesis Avionics Suite, composed of dual IDU-680 EFIS displays, Genesis VHF Navcom Aircraft Digital Radio, Genesis IFR Helicopter Autopilot, dual redundant ATAHARs, dual GPS, FMS, and other equipment required to achieve IFR certification. Genesis is continuing to innovate its IFR helicopter autopilots with the addition of the fourth axis for hover hold and collective control feature that bring enhanced lateral and vertical functionality and the course intercept capabilities once reserved for military and transport helicopters. Additionally, the Genesis IFR helicopter autopilot fourth axis functionality adds to current pitch, roll, and yaw controls and provides life-saving stability augmentation in a lightweight system. Announcing the Genesis UHF Airborne Radio. This remote-mounted UHF communications radio is designed for fixed-wing and helicopter platforms. It is also designed for easy replacement of existing Honeywell Bendix King KTR-909 UHF radios, bringing high swap C savings. The Genesis UHF Airborne Radio is ideal for trainers, maritime patrol, NGO and contract military utility operation, plus other special mission aircraft. Coming up after the break, aircraft damaged and destroyed in MKC Gus NATO. the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Aircraft damaged and destroyed in MKC windstorm. On Thursday, April 20th, high gusty winds resulted in a passing storm destroyed eight airplanes and damaged three others at Kansas City, Missouri's Charles B. Wheeler Downtown Airport. 
The entirety of the destroyed and damaged aircraft belonged to ATD Flight Systems, a flight school and 27-year MKC institution. On the morning of the incident, the National Weather Service reported 32-mile-per-hour winds at MKC with gusts up to 45 miles per hour. The NWS data is consistent with reports that the aircraft were damaged at or about 0600 CST. Yellow Ribbon Honor Flight returns to AirVenture 2023. Among the most emotional and poignant traditions of the annual Air Venture Fly-In will again be observed in 2023. 100 Vietnam War veterans will be honored on July 28th with the Yellow Ribbon Honor Flight by which they will be transported to Washington, D.C., where the veterans will visit the United States' most sacrosanct memorials, including the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, before returning to Oshkosh at the end of Friday's air show. The returning veterans will be honored by thousands of event attendees gathered to salute them earnestly, if not nearly 50 years after the fact. Remains of B-24 pilot lost in 1943 identified. The Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency announced that U.S. Army Air Force's First Lieutenant John B. Thomas of Rochester, New York, who lost his life at age 23 fighting in the Second World War's European theater, has been accounted for. In the summer of 1943, Lieutenant Thomas was assigned to the USAAF 345th Heavy Bombardment Squadron, 98th Heavy Bombardment Group, 9th Air Force. On August 1st, while taking part in Operation Tidal Wave, the consolidated B-24 Liberator Heavy Bomber under Lieutenant Thomas's command was brought down by enemy anti-aircraft fire. AEA Live continues on Wednesday. The AEA convention and trade show enjoyed several hours of live streaming on Monday, with 33 presenters showing their latest and greatest during the 2023 AEA New Product Introduction Session, which has been streamed live by ANN for the last 15 years. Tuesday, over a dozen newsmakers were interviewed one-on-one, -on -one, and we will resume this in-depth coverage Wednesday at 1100 Eastern. See all the news at airborne-live.net. Don't miss it. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Aspen updates ProMax software and adds more autopilot support. While Aspen completes its role in their merger into Aero Group, they continue to upgrade the capabilities of their ProMax flight displays. They have extended runway center lines on the MFD map, reduced AutoMax brightness, and are adapting the series to work with a number of new autopilot systems. The main, the main uh, purpose of it, a lot had to do with it, was to do the baseline of the GFC 600 digital interface that we have now. Um, that digital interface is going to give you, with the, with the software unlock, it's going to give you the altitude, um, in, in, altitude pre-select and indicated airspeed selection as well as digital flight director. Currently, right now, it's only on the pre-1984 Bonanzas with the um, flat panel right now, but uh, hopefully soon we'll have a bunch of more airframes added to that. It did also add the Eric 429 outputs for the Trio and the Bendix King autopilots, um, the Aero Cruise 100 um, for some pre-select stuff um, that hopefully they'll be working on that soon. Some of the user interfaces um, improvements is that they, we added some extended runway information uh, for the pilot there on the MFD and reduced the auto max brightness from from the 70 to 50. We had a lot of feedback that when it went to max bright, it just blinded you. So we uh, reduced it down to 50%. Some uh, dealer improvements, the software for you guys out there, um, expanded fault logs so that we're able to grab a lot more information from what happens to the unit if there is a failure or any any information like that so that we can troubleshoot a lot more better with you guys out there and really dive down and figure out what went wrong and why anything went wrong. Um, it does have a better AHARS performance in it and along with that is an updated EA100 software that you'll need because the the better performance on the AHARS as well as some uh, DFC 90 software um, fixes and update there. And then, of course, the teaser, other provisions for future <laughs> improvements that we can add later on. Um, along with the 212 software, we, we, uh, we certified the EF E5 and, and uh, got it TSO'd. So what a TSO does to the E5 is that it's going to simplify our production 
in in the factory and it's going to reduce the lead times and repair times um, it's going to allow us to do more more software and more updates quicker because of the the certification because of the hardware is exactly the same between the the pro max and the e5 so it's going to expedite a lot of stuff going forward just like on the pro max we did add the eric 429 um, outputs for the trio and the the bendix king autopilots the e5 if you do have a customer that that has an e5 and wants to do the upgrade to the 212 and grab some of that uh, some of that feature and functionality the, the unit does have to come back to us for a little bit and then we can put the software on there and update the hardware and after these messages true blue power unveils new lithium main ship batteries The future of USB charging power has arrived. Introducing new, ultra-fast charging TA360 USB chargers. Unlock the power of USB power delivery PD technology. Max power. multiple configurations, in-seat cabin cockpit and galley USB power, and a direct upgrade for all True Blue Power USB chargers, compatible with any USB electronic device. Easy to install, backed by the best. True Blue Power, the USB experts. Welcome back. True Blue Power unveils new lithium main ship batteries. True Blue Power unveiled two new main ship batteries at 2023's AEA International Convention and Trade Show. True Blue Power's TB14 13 amp hour and TB28 26 amp hour lithium ion batteries are specifically designed for smaller fixed wing Part 23 aircraft. Weighing only 10 pounds apiece, the TB14 and TB28 are the smallest and lightest aircraft batteries yet produced by True Blue Power. Designed respectively for aircraft with 14-volt and 28-volt electrical systems, the TB14 and TB28 advanced lithium-ion batteries retail individually for $2,499. Hello AEA! I'm Brett Williams, Vice President of Engineering for Midcontinent Instruments and Avionics and True Blue Power. I hope you're all enjoying the new product introduction, and just for some fun, I'm here at Stearman Field in Kansas to introduce you to the latest and greatest lithium ion mainship batteries from True Blue Power. We've spent more than a year working hard to bring the power of lithium ion technology to the heart of general aviation. And guess what? The result? Right here. The TB14 and its cousin, the TB28, lithium ion mainship batteries. These are the lightest, longest lasting, and best performing batteries you've ever seen in a small Part 23 aircraft, just like this Cirrus right here behind me. The TB14 is designed specifically for 28 volt aircraft, and at just 10 pounds, this thing weighs less than two gallons of Avgas. And also to make sure that we haven't forgot about all you 14 volt aircraft out there, we have the TB28. It's the exact same size, the exact same weight, but at half the voltage and twice the capacity, it's made just for you. Check this out. These guys are so small, I can put two of them in a shoebox with room to spare. But what good is a battery if you can't install it, right? These batteries are right sized and right priced and ready for your aircraft. 
And we have an AML STC right around the corner. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.